I mean, yes, maybe I can believe that there really was a man named Jesus. And maybe he had really good morals. And maybe he got a bunch of crazies so riled up in this little fantasy world of his that he had them believing that he did what no man, to my knowledge, has ever done, come back from the dead. Oh, and not only that, but he's going to come to this totally after world that you and I know all too well, and he's going to make everything all better again. No, I don't think so. You see, Christianity is just mysticism, lore, an uneducated, closed-minded worldview that has no real basis in reason or fact. This is the story that the modern man tells us. We as Christians fight against a religion of science that constantly challenges our faith. Yet in the midst of it all, we are called to be a light into the world. But how do I share the good news with someone who discredits me from the get-go? Stephen in Acts 7 tells us, here we see from beginning to end how to be a faithful witness to Christ in a world that is completely and utterly combative towards the gospel. Stephen, in his very short time in biblical text, gives us a picture of a complete witness. One that speaks revelation, understands repentance, and, at the end of all things, initiates reconciliation. Now, at the beginning of Acts 7, 7, 2 through 50, Stephen basically gives us a really long and detailed speech, taking Old Testament texts and speaking God's revelation into them. He brings a new thought process or philosophy, if you will, to these ancient texts. His main point being, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with human hands. Now Jesus is the new temple, and it's through him and through him only that men will come to know God. He's saying, God has done something great. The Messiah has come, and you are about to miss out on it. Now, though this is incredibly right, notice Stephen isn't speaking here simply to be right, but rather he is speaking specific revelation from God into this community that needs to hear it. Stephen was called to preach the gospel to this group, and likewise, we are called to preach the gospel to the world. The very first part of our complete witness starts with being able to speak the revelation of Christ to those who so desperately need to hear it. But who speaks without a foundation? Our revelation is nothing unless it's grounded in a firm understanding of repentance through Christ. Quote, and when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and gnashed at him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into the heavens and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, look, I see the heavens opened up and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Acts 7, 54 through 56. You see, being filled with the Holy Spirit, we know that Stephen not only believed in Jesus, but acts in servitude to him. He, know that, he knows that Jesus is the only Savior and the only one to which he would be ultimately judged by. This vision of him seeing Jesus standing at the right hand of God, it's incredibly powerful. In all other mentions of Christ at the right hand of God, Jesus is sitting, yet here he stands standing in defense of Stephen before God. Quote, for the Son of Glory, oh, the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Matthew 16, 27. This is incredibly liberating for us, as well as Stephen, as we know that we have no fear of persecution of man. Paul in Romans 8, 34 puts it this way, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who has died and furthermore is risen, who sits at the right of God, who even sits at the right hand of God and furthermore intercedes for us. I mean, we can't begin to share our witness without first coming to the foot of the cross. In repentance, we are humbled and comforted in knowing that no matter the earthly consequences, Christ has provided for us eternal life with God and the riches of his kingdom. Now, we as Christians seem to be fairly comfortable with speaking revelation into people's lives and accepting Christ as Savior, but there's a final piece, and probably the most important to Stephen's witness, that I think we're not so comfortable with. Imagine this. You are Stephen. Not only do I not agree with you, 
but our conversations have become rather violent. You are a liar and a cheat. You are a blasphemer, the scum of the earth, and you deserve to die. And yet, Stephen, in understanding God's ultimate purpose to reconcile all things to himself, responds in two ways. First, he reconciles himself to God. Quote, and they stoned Stephen as he called out to God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. I find it amazing that Stephen, while he's dying a painfully slow death, still sees it fit to ask God to receive his spirit. Stephen, the very first to die for Christ's sake, understands that he too is at the ultimate mercy of God. God owes him nothing. How humbling would it be if while we knew that Jesus rewards and protects us, we expected nothing in return for our servitude for, to him. Stephen could have asked God for anything, including to be spared from death itself, yet he asked humbly for God to receive his spirit. How often in ministry do we remember to reconcile ourselves to God? And then the text says, he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them for this sin. So you're telling me that Stephen, in his last dying breath, not only asked God to receive his spirit as if it needed any asking, but then requests a pardon for those who are murdering him? Why? Why should we? You see, he's not saying here, I take back what I said, or I was wrong, but rather Stephen drives home a point here that needs to be at the heart of any message we speak. There is no force, human or otherwise, that can stop the redemptive power of Jesus Christ. Not hatred, not bigotry, not malice, and not even murder will stop the work that God has done and will continue to do in his effort to reconcile all things to himself. And no matter the fleshly weaknesses that come up, Christ has already bought salvation for us. Demons will be cast out, relationships will be healed, walls will be broken down, and the glory of God will be shown. And what greater example do we have of this than Stephen in Acts 7 showing this picture of the grace of God right before his undeserved murder? I mean, whatever the audience, Whatever the consequences, Christ has called all those who believe in him to share the good news. And being bearers of this news, we must take it very seriously, for we fight a vicious battle in which we are called to, quote, deny ourselves and take up his cross, Matthew 16, 24. Stephen denies himself and takes up Christ's cross. The revelation, repentance, and reconciliation. If we can speak the truth of God, understand our place beneath Jesus, and ultimately work to be the image of Christ's love in this world, we have a witness that cannot be stopped. You see, our complete witness is proof that now everything has changed. For God has put into motion a story of human redemption that will continue throughout the ages. Thanks.